For more on the conservative agenda under a Trump presidency and the president's planned speech in front of Congress tomorrow night, we're joined this evening by Ed Martin, former Missouri GOP chair, and Brian Keene, who is the president of Smart Power. Gentlemen, thanks for your time tonight. I want to point out that I didn't hear a whole lot about health care at that uh, <laughs> CPAC convention last week. And I see today the president said that nobody knew it would be this complicated. Brian, what's your reaction to that? Well, it's, <laughs> he may be the only one that didn't know that. Though, by the way, there is tape that shows he talking with uh, former President Obama and they're both of them lamenting how complicated it is. In fact, that's what's going on, and that's what's so shocking with the president, is that life is complicated, governing is complicated, and that's what's really kind of amazing. He's kind of giving us this TV show, The Trump Show, and trying to fool us all the time, but really, these are complicated issues, and you can't just kind of paper them over. Ed, it doesn't sound like there's gonna be any movement on health care anytime soon, that there is a real division within the Republicans, and that's maybe yeah. why we didn't hear a whole lot about it at CPAC. Yeah, I think you're right. Look, I think um, uh, anyone who thinks governing is simple and easy, most candidates run. Uh, Obama's been quoted as saying that when he ran, he thought it would be one thing, got in office, it was another. Okay. That's right. Obama cares hard. I think uh, he's relying on Secretary Price to come up with something good. But let me go back for one second to what you started this, sh this segment or a couple of segments ago. I mean, military superiority is a great lesson of success for a nation. I think that's what Trump is going to do with that budget. I think, you know, again, Trump is doing things with executive orders, reversing Obama, but also putting America first. It's a pretty dramatic change. I, a different question might be, when's the stock market going to stop going up? And uh, is the economy yeah. really expanding? I mean, how, well, we, it feels better. I, I'd say this, Ed. I'd put it this well, way. Well, I'll tell you what might feel better to the military, and that's uh, another $54 billion. The question is, where is right. it going to come from? Right. And that's other parts of the budget. Brian, where's he going right. to find that? Well, a couple, a couple of points here. One is, you know, who's it going to feel better to? One is watch Speaker Ryan tomorrow night. They are very carefully looking at those poll numbers that Trump has, and they are not good numbers. This is the most unpopular yeah, president. Yeah, it's the same as the election. It's the same as the election. Well, this the, is, the numbers were bad but, for Trump before the election. Well, I know, but this the is... The public is with them. They're with them. Oh, no, 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 they're not. That's what's going on. They're no, actually they seeing are. an incompetent president. They think this is a charade. No. They think this is a, sh a no. circus. And no. it's, it's... You it's and the, the New York House Times are seeing that. No, I everybody think that's else is see Everybody think, else has I seen think, an effective president putting us first. No, I think that's not true, because what you're not seeing is that Paul Ryan and his House of Representatives are up for re-election in a number of months. They are scared. They don't want to lose the House. So when you kind of put it in that perspective, there's, you have to there's understand. There's no chance to lose the House. No, well, no chance. Ask, what, what do we no, need? I, here's just an open question here. That. I love what do we need great. another $54 billion for? Who are we going to invade this I'll time? Well, here's is, what's going I on. I mean, is the price tag, Ed, $54 billion more to defeat ISIS? The president hasn't no. even gotten a plan yet, but he right. wants the money. What about that? Well, no, look, I think you make a good point, but I think I look backwards. First of all, two things. If you have something to spend the money on, it gives you a better reason to cut. If you're just cutting because you want to save money, that's hard to convince people. So when you say you're going to cut from departments, you're right. Foreign aid, all the kind of junk being spent in HUD and places will be cut back. That's great. But look, I think the military has been, for you go go look at this, has been left lagging on the development of ships and on technology, on warfare in the sky in terms of both planes as well as uh, lay and thing you know kind of the SDI stuff so spending on that I think is good for us but look you're right we have a president who has said he wants America first and is somewhat isolationist spending money on the military uh, you're right there's a sort of tension but I think it's not a problem well, we are, I thought we already had a superior military this is what's so exactly. puzzling about this and what message does this send to other countries that were We've got the biggest and the largest military buildup ever. Brian, your thoughts on well, that? Well, the only one who's criticized our U.S. military, our men and women in uniform, is the President of the United States. He's the one who's criticized them. So that's number one. But number two, we have a lot of enemies because President Trump is making them. He is making them with Muslims. He's making them with transgendered students. He's making oh, them on. with Australians. <laughs> the come on. He's even making them, by the way, us? he's making them with his own staff. Today, he's, he's calling in their cell phones so that he can get Spicer to call these guys. I mean, give me a break. Like... 
In related news, there are reports that Hamas has built at least 15 terror tunnels reaching into territory belonging to the Jewish state. This latest apparent intelligence comes just ahead of tomorrow's anticipated release of an internal Israeli governmental report that's expected to be extremely critical of the country's failure to adequately prepare for the same deadly underground threat prior to the 2014 Hamas conflict. Reporters at Israel's Channel 2 News are citing unnamed high-level security cabinet officials as their sources for the claims about the new cross-border tunnels. Nearly three years ago, 34 such passages were discovered and destroyed by the IDF during the 50-day battle against Hamas, who used them to carry out attacks against Israeli soldiers and civilians. Since that time, Israeli security forces have been doing all they can to improve their ability to counter the threat. According to leaked portions of the state comptroller's review due out tomorrow, the findings are highly critical of the army for not having properly dealt with the tunnel issue in advance of the conflict, known in Israel as Operation Protective Edge. Plus, it's also likely to attribute blame to the political establishment for improper management of the campaign. Tragedy was narrowly averted this afternoon when alert security guards were able to successfully head off an attack by an Arab woman who was charging at them while brandishing a weapon. Details are continuing to emerge over the incident, which occurred at the Kalandia checkpoint north of Jerusalem. What we know so far is that the woman is said to have begun her approach on foot in a lane designated for vehicular traffic. After reportedly ignoring repeated orders to halt from guards operating the crossing, she then took out what appeared to be a knife as she continued to advance in their direction. The woman was then overcome and arrested. There have been no reported injuries to the guards nor the suspected terrorists. Now, let's turn to an eye-opening interview that I had earlier this week. Modern slavery still exists, and in many places around the world, it comes in the form of human trafficking. Igal Tzul is a travel show host and author who has seen this tragic issue with his own eyes while traversing the world. And now he's just published a book about the tragic story of one Israeli family who experienced human trafficking firsthand. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you as well. All right, nice so being here. I, I'm, I'm frustrated this is in Hebrew. We'll talk about when it's going to be available in English because I would love to read this. But can you tell us a little bit more about the story? I, I'll tell you like this. The, the, basically, uh, the story is about a mother who is there opening a new hotel in Koh Samoy, in the island of Koh Samoy in Thailand. And it's a great day. And the next day is the bat mitzvah of the daughter and, and this morning, the daughter is going out to the beach. She see a Thai lady who is doing, you know, the hair with the... And she said to mom, oh, I'm going for a few seconds to the beach. And then she disappeared. And, uh, of course, the book is a thriller about the mother. She's becoming like, you know, a, a real tough after seeing that nobody's helping her. Not the police, not the Israeli police, not the Interpol, not the Thai police. And she said, where's my daughter? Well, you know, there's been so many stories like this. But what I was interested in one aspect is, you know, the Israeli, uh, I would say, ambience. A lot of Israelis are now living in Thailand and Cambodia. And part of them are, uh, you know, not on the right side, I would say, of the law. A lot of criminals, petty criminals, uh, people who can't stay here, so they move to Thailand because right. it's sort of, you know, playground for all, uh, all things. The second part was because I was traveling so much in Thailand, basically in Cambodia, when you still see like this sort of human traffic, of sex traffic, um, Unfortunately, a lot of Israelis, uh, I would not say maybe part of the, the, you know, but they're taking part of it, even right. participating. So I was, you know, seeing so many of this. So I was thinking how I can uh, combine the two stories together. I cannot change the world, but at least I can point and say, guys, they should be stopped, you know, so... Well, I can imagine, I mean, that was probably one of the bigger inspirations were your travels in Thailand, and I think that there are a lot of people who travel to that part of the world, not necessarily with the best uh, intentions, intentions in, Absolutely in mind. Not. But I also think there are people who don't even realize that this human trafficking is happening around them, and they're seeing it firsthand, the people who are working in the tourism industry. One of the motivation of the, the lost person 
I met a Canadian lady and she was looking for a daughter for a long time. So this of the, the you know, the lost person, there's the, so many pe people who get lost, you know, Israeli persons, uh, young, guy, young guys basically, uh, after army. So I was involved in, in searching and even going out as a journalist to cover these stories. And I tried to pull all this and, and looking into a bit of the moral side of the Israeli outside of Israel. And my view, you know... It wasn't as pretty as you thought, as you no, hoped it would be. No, exactly not. So uh, it, it's a bit, you know, first of all, it's a thriller, it's a story. But I sense I had to, you know, stand and put a moral side of the author and of myself as a person who, who see a lot of this. Um, guys, please stop doing it. That's the point. Now, here's a beautiful story for everyone. A group of Palestinian women in Gaza are working together to help survivors of breast cancer, and many of them have faced the devastating disease themselves. Well, many of us have the privilege of being able to go out for dinner or even just open a full fridge. Every night, roughly one in every eight people go to bed hungry. The number of people living with chronic hunger has dropped significantly in recent years, but the agriculture industry is still under heavy pressure to keep up with the world's growing population. Well, now one Israeli company has come up with an incredible new system that both efficiently and effectively helps our farms keep up with the growth. Joining me today to tell us more about her company is the CEO and founder of Soulchip, Dr. Shani Kesal. Thank you so much for coming in. I'm happy to be here. Great. So tell us, what does Soulchip do? I see that you have this device right here with you. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, Soulchip is an Internet of Think, of Think company uh, which developed a unique power and energy platform and communication based on its, on its uh, solar chip. So this is the innovation of solar chip, the solar chip. And what I'm holding in my hand is the electrical the, uh, card, which gives communication and power. Uh, the solar chips gather the energy from light from the surrounding and give it to the application. In this case, we use this application uh, to get data from sensors for agriculture. Wow. Okay. So, so is there anything that exists like this on the market right now? Or of course, there is. There is competitions, but uh, the competition is uh, uh, usually today the agriculture they use instead of uh, battery. They use wires or batteries instead to supply of solar the energy. energy. Yes. Right. So exactly. this is extremely important for the and, environment. Uh, absolutely. Uh, also, there are other solar big panels here in the market, but the uniqueness of our product that it's on our, uh, there is a special design of the solar chips. So overall, the energy efficiency of the system is very, very uh, high. And uh, that's why we can support in, with such a small unit uh, the needs of uh, communication and, uh, and sensors. So uh, this is an important thing in agriculture where you have to have the unit protected, sealed, uh, protected against machines and animals. So with other solutions which are much bigger and based on wires, uh, it, they are quite uh, uncomfortable and not being used so well. So, so my question for you is how has this affected crop yield? I mean, what does it mean for okay. farmers that are using uh, it? Well, the area that is really, uh, we are covering quite strong with uh, uh, a lot of customers coming f indeed from uh, agriculture. Uh, the idea is to get the data, to send it to the cloud, and then to do the analysis and decide what to do. For example, one of the basic things is to give water to, uh, to the crop. So you need to give the exact amount of water. Right, you don't want to it waste water. Exactly. Mm -hmm. First, you don't want to waste. The second, you, have to, you want to have a good yield, and this is affect the yield as right, well. Right. But not only water. We can, we're measuring the temperature and other important parameters for the crops, and depends on the kind of the crop. It helps also to make uh, less uh, expenses on the operation. For example, we have a customer in South America which is measuring the, uh, the size of the fruit and he's, uh, he sits uh, 700, uh, 700 kilometers from the, uh, from the planet. Right. So he knows when to come to pick exactly on time. And uh, these are examples of how to make uh, the things 
uh, much uh, cheaper for him to Absolutely. help. Absolutely. Now, my question is, can you use this solar chip for other type of industries as Absolutely. well, not just Absolutely. agriculture? Absolutely. I mentioned we are an IoT company. So uh, another segment we, are, we have already have a finished pilot in the company's RMP Park is smart cities. Wow. So as a matter of fact, we give energy to sensors. There can be many kinds of sensors. Some examples here is for uh, smart parking. The company, the the how to find an an open uh, parking an, spot yes. in a very crowded Tel Aviv. It can be exactly. very difficult to do exactly. that. Exactly. Yes, and it's all over the world, not only in Tel Aviv. That's true. So uh, the, we we did not develop sensor, but we supplied the platform, the energy and the communication. Another example, which is also going to be quite important, is to do uh, waste management, uh, smart waste management. It means mm -hmm. to come to pick up, to pick up trash the, the trash, trash exactly when the bin is uh, in the same uh, uh, full, but not too much, <laughs> so it goes out or not too empty because it it costs a lot to send there the <laughs> in the car well, it again. Like this is and so yeah. on and so on. Another hot area in smart cities is asset tracking. We are also having, a, it's not, it's again, we are, we are providing the energy and sometimes also the communication. Mm -hmm. in this unit, there is also uh, the ability to have a chip of communication. We do the storage as well, but we, have, the customers are uh, developing the, the sensor and the rest of the application. So it's. Uh, oh, I mean, it sounds like you guys have created something that has <laughs> the ability to impact the world. Absolutely. Welcome to the Cloud Back with Julie Roginski, where we take Twitter back from the trolls, so haters may hate, but I clap back. The trolls were out in full force when I tweeted, quote, every single self-respecting news organization should boycott Spicer's briefings until he issues an apology. I tweeted that after the White House froze out media organizations that President Trump has slammed as fake news. And President, Press Secretary Sean Spicer held a gaggle with reporters behind closed doors where he handpicked which news organizations could attend. Not included were the New York Times, newspaper, CNN, and Politico. This prompted me to tweet, quote, I'm an arrival news network, but I still have to ask the question of the White House. Which story of CNN's has been proven to be false? Then John tweeted, quote, Julie, all of them, try paying attention for a change. All of them, really, even the Malaysia Airline one? And then I wanted proof, and Mark chimed in and said, the Martin Luther King bus. Mm, no, that wasn't them. That was a different news outlet, but okay. Then Michael so kindly reminded me, come on, Julie, it's the tone, conjecture. What is interjected that is so fake and misleading? You are not naive. Well, I'm not naive, but you still haven't given me any, um, any evidence. But thanks, Mike. Don't know what I'd do without that nugget. So here's the difference between fake news and real news. Here's some fake news. I'm a six-foot-tall blonde. No matter how much I want to wake up and be six-foot-tall blonde tomorrow, I'm still 5'3", and I've got dark hair. Real news is when you report something that happens to be factually accurate. And if you don't like what that factual accuracy represents, it doesn't mean that it's fake. All it means is that you don't like it. That's the difference. And every time our president, any of his supporters, anybody else takes a piece of information that has been sourced adequately and reported on by a major news organization, and calls it fake news just because it doesn't appeal to your narrative or his narrative, that just makes you look weak. And in all the different tweets that were sent to me, I combed through every single one of them when I asked for an example of this almost a week ago. Not one person could tell me what a piece of fake news from CNN was other than just news that didn't make the president look so good. So look, just because you don't like the news does not, does not, does not mean it's fake. Four billion dollars. The question is, where's right. it going to come from? And right. that's other parts of the budget. Brian, where's he going right. to find that? Well, a couple, a couple of points here. One is, you know, who's it going to feel better to? One is, watch Speaker Ryan tomorrow night. 
they are very carefully looking at those poll numbers that Trump has, and they are not good numbers. This is the most unpopular yeah, president. It's the same as the election. It's the same as the election. Well, and this the, is, the numbers were bad but, for Trump before the election. Well, I know, but this the is public is with them. They're with them. Oh no, 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 no. They're not. That's what's going on. They're no, actually they seeing are. an incompetent president. They think this is a charade. No. They think this is a, sh a no. circus. And no. it's it's you it's and the, the New York House Times are seeing that. No, I everybody think that's else cute. is seeing. Everybody think, else has seen an effective president putting us first. No, I think that's not true because what you're not seeing is that Paul Ryan and his House of Representatives are up for re-election in a number of months. They are scared. They don't want to lose the House. So when you kind of put it in that perspective, there's, you have to there's understand. There's no chance to lose the House. No, well, no chance. Ask, what, what do we no, need? I, here's just an open question here. That. I love what that. do we That's need great. another $54 billion for? Who are we going to invade? Just kind of paper them over. Ed, it doesn't sound like there's going to be any movement on health care anytime soon, that there is a real division within the Republicans, and that's maybe yeah. why we didn't hear a whole lot about it at CPAC. Yeah, I think you're right. Look, I think um, uh, anyone who thinks governing is simple and easy, most candidates run. Uh, Obama's been quoted as saying that when he ran, he thought it would be one thing, got in office, it was another. Okay. That's right. Obama cares hard. I think uh, he's relying on Secretary Price to come up with something good. But let me go back for one second to what you started this, sh this segment or a couple of segments ago. I mean, military superiority is a great lesson of success for a nation. I think that's what Trump is going to do with that budget. I think, you know, again, Trump is doing things with executive orders, reversing Obama, but also putting America first. It's a pretty dramatic change. I, a different question might be, when's the stock market going to stop going up? And uh, is the economy yeah. really expanding? I mean, how, well, we, it feels better. I, I'd say this, Ed. I'd put it this well, way. Well, i tell you what might feel better to the military, and that's uh, another fit this I'll time. Well, here's what's going I on. I mean, is the price tag, Ed, $54 billion more to defeat ISIS? The president hasn't no. even gotten a plan yet, but he right. wants the money. What about that? Well, no, look, I think you make a good point, but I think I look backwards. First of all, two things. If you have something to spend the money on, it gives you a better reason to cut. If you're just cutting because you want to save money, that's hard to convince people. So when you say you're going to cut from departments, you're right. Foreign aid, all the kind of junk being spent in HUD and places will be cut back. That's great. But look, I think the military has been, for you go, go look at this, has been left lagging on the development of ships and on technology, on warfare in the sky in terms of both planes as well as uh, lasers and thing, you know, kind of the SDI stuff. So spending on that, I think, is good for us. But look, you're right. We have a president who has said he wants America first and is somewhat isolationist, spending money on the military. Uh, you're right, there's a sort of tension, but I think it's not a problem. Well, we say, are, I thought we already had a superior military. This is what's so exactly. puzzling about this. And what message does this send to other countries that we're, we've got the biggest... For more on the conservative agenda under a Trump presidency and the president's planned speech in front of Congress tomorrow night, we're joined this evening by Ed Martin, former Missouri GOP chair, and Brian Keene, who is the president of Smart Power. Gentlemen, thanks for your time tonight. I want to point out that I didn't hear a whole lot about health care at that uh, <laughs> CPAC convention last week. And I see today the president said that nobody knew it would be this complicated. Ryan, what's your reaction to that? Well, it's, <laughs> he may be the only one that didn't know that. Though, by the way, there is tape that shows he talking with uh, former President Obama, and they're both of them lamenting how complicated it is. In fact, that's what's going on, and that's what's so shocking with the president, is that life is complicated. Governing is complicated, and that's what's really kind of amazing. He's kind of giving us this TV show, the Trump show, and trying to fool us all the time, but really... These are complicated issues, and you can't just... in the largest military buildup ever. Brian, your thoughts on well, that? Well, the only one who's criticized our U.S. military, our men and women in uniform, is the President of the United States. He's the one who's criticized them. So that's number one. But number two, we have a lot of enemies because President Trump is making them. He is making them with Muslims. He's making them with transgendered students. He's making oh, them with on. Australians. Tra the come on. He's even making them, by the way, us? he's making them with his own staff. Today, he's, he's calling in their cell phones so that he can get Spicer to call these guys. I mean, give me a break. Like... In related news, there are reports that Hamas has built at least 15 terror tunnels reaching into territory belonging to the Jewish state. This latest apparent intelligence comes just ahead of tomorrow's anticipated release of an internal Israeli governmental report that's expected to be extremely critical of the country's failure to adequately prepare for the same deadly underground threat prior to the 2014 Hamas conflict. 
Reporters at Israel's Channel 2 News are citing unnamed high-level security cabinet officials as their sources for the claims about the new cross-border tunnels.